New Testament. Second letter to Timothy, chapter 3, and verse 1. Second letter to Timothy, chapter 3, verse 1. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to their parents, unfaithful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jambres resisted Moses, so do these also res resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapproved concerning the faith. But they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifest to all, as theirs also was. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. And that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. <coughs> I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but according to their own desires because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and my time of my departure is at hand. I have fought, fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Finally there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Amen. The Word of God is prophetic, divinely inspired, and without a lie. A word that is not human, even though it was written by human hands, but it is inspired as it is divinely inspired. The inspirer is God, and he who wrote it in reality is God. And as he is prophetic, he refers especially to the days of these these latter days where the days will be evil as back then during that time in Israel the time when 
in a wretched way Ahab ruled over the kingdom, so also now in these latter days people reign who have no fear of God, of God, they have no godliness, and this is obvious not only in the world, but also in the worldly religions, but it is also within churches that are born again, even churches that have the Holy Spirit, even families of believers, even in the hearts of men, in our hearts. And God wants correction. God wants correction because what God knows is not only our today, but what God knows a lot better than all of us is our tomorrow and furthermore that specific day after the rapture of the church. Because two will be in a bed. One will be raptured, the other will be left behind. Two will be in the field. One will be taken, the other will be left. Two will be at the mill. One will be taken, the other will be left. The fact that they are together, that they have fellowship with one another, that they go to the same church, does not guarantee to any one of us that we will partake in the rapture of the church. How much more if we are out of the church where even in the church has entered some corruption of the flesh and of money, of interest, how much more out of the church, where even in the church the lack of fear of God has seeped in, disobedience to the word of God has seeped in, preaching other doctrines has seeped in, and not that of the kingdom of heaven. Imagine what is happening in the world where the ruler and king is the devil and Satan. Evil days are coming. For people will be without fear of God, within and without of the churches. They will be lovers of themselves. They will love themselves. They will care about themselves only. They will not care about Elijah who is asking for just a bit of bread from the abundance. The widow was never a lover of herself, but in the latter days people will be lovers of themselves. They will be lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedience to the parents. Amazing characteristic so that we may see in what situation we are nowadays our family and our children. Unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of of godliness they proclaim that they have godliness but they deny its power and the amazing commandment of God from such people turn away leave those people separate yourself from such people leave and go to Sarephath and Sidon leave Christ has nothing to do with mammon. Light has nothing to do with darkness. Truth has nothing to do with a lie. Avoid such people. Because of, of such are some who go around and proselytize and they try to convince with foreign doctrines trying to trap gullible women that are full of sins which are led away by their various desires and which women never learn so that they do not are not able they are not able to come to the knowledge of the truth 
truth. But other people as well who resist the truth with strength, with, uh, with courage, like Janus and Jabris, who resist as Moses, so also these people resist the truth. Why? Because they have been deceived by the devil. And they have corrupted their minds. They have a corrupt mind because they have fallen away from the simplicity in Christ Jesus. They are disapproved concerning the faith. But they will progress no further. Their fall is coming and indeed through their foolishness. So that their foolishness becomes obvious and manifest to all as theirs also was. So separation here. There are people of godliness and there are people of disrespect. Ungodliness. There are people of godliness who study and continue in the word of God. And their progress is apparent to all. They pay attention, they're careful of themselves, and especially to the doctrine. They continue in these things because they know that if they do these things, they will save themselves and those who hear him, hear them within their family, within their uh, relatives, and in their church, in the world, in their surroundings, in their work. So great separation, differentiation in these latter days with one criteria, the truth of the gospel in the simplicity of Jesus Christ. I repeat it. The truth of the word of God in the absolute simplicity of Jesus Christ. For that reason, the Apostle Paul turns to Timothy now and he says, But you now, you, must, you have followed my doctrine. You have, you have followed my manner of life. The way that I live, you have observed. You have known me, you have been close to me. And my doctrine, and my manner of life, the way that I live, I do not say other things, preach other things, and live other things. The things that I preach, that is what I do. And my purpose, my goals, which is the glory of God, you observe this in me. Because you followed me. You followed my faith, my long-suffering, my love, my perseverance, but also my sufferings, my persecutions, my afflictions and all the things that I have suffered and you know that of all these things the Lord delivered me and I am free because he who delivered me delivers and will continue to deliver me until that day comes when Christ will receive me up in heaven this is a man of God the believer in doctrine in the way of life and in his intentions in his faith in his long suffering in his love in his perseverance but also in his trials i have complete he has he has completely trusted the forbearance of God, the love of God, the mercy of God, not taking into account all these evil things and these evil days that he is living, that Elijah lived back then, and we are living now and will continue to live. But on the contrary, While everyone who will desire to live godly will suffer persecution, they will convict them, they will reproach them, they will accuse them, they will insult them. Everyone who wants to live godly, do you want to live godly? 
There are two roads. The road of godliness and the path of disrespect. The path of ungodliness will have... They will, there will be flattering, there will be offerings, there will be provocations. But the way of godliness will have persecution. And it is a matter of choice. Today, my dear brethren, I plead with you in the name of Jesus Christ, let us choose the way of godliness. That is what will lead us to heaven. There's no other way. On the contrary, people who are deceiving, imposters, and will grow worse and worse as they will deceive and be deceived. They will trick and be tricked. <clears throat> they are unapproved in their mind, disapproved in their mind, because they have rejected the fear of God and the love of Christ, the simplicity of Jesus. But you, Timothy, how nicely now he speaks to this brother of his and he lo- a brother of his and he loves him so much. He says, "But you must know." Timothy knows from infancy. We, every one of us, from when the Lord invited us. But he says, you know the holy letters. Not books and, and opinions of theology and thoughts and whatnot. You know the holy scriptures, which are the only ones who are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. No one else can give you wisdom except through the Holy Scriptures. But this wisdom that will lead you to heaven. Because only the Scripture is divinely inspired and profitable. Only the Scripture teaches you, but also corrects you, but also instructs you, but also trains you. On a a training in righteousness, instruction in righteousness, that the Holy Bible may appoint you and make you complete, a complete man of God, equipped, not in knowledge that puffs up, but in every good work. Only the Word of God can do this. For that reason, the Apostle Paul says, I charge you and every one of us, Christ says to us, I charge you, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead, preach the word. Only the word. Only the gospel of Jesus Christ. Only the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God that saves those who believe it. So preach the word. Be ready and insist in season, out of season. At the appropriate time, at the inappropriate time, don't judge the times and seasons. They they don't belong to you. They don't belong to us. You must continue in the Word. You must preach the Word of God. In season, out of season. Convince. Rebuke. Exhort. And on to salvation for repentance, for return. For blessing. Do not hesitate. Do not be a coward. Do not refrain. These are the latter latter days. So preach the word. Have you heard this brother? Have you heard this? Did you listen? Did you hear this sister? Preach the word. Insist in the word. Continue in the word. Only the Word of God. Leave the other things aside. They will all lead you to becoming a a wicked and flattering servant who will just go from worse to worse, being deceived by the devil and deceiving other people with foreign spirits from God. My brethren, when the disciples said to Christ, has now the kingdom of God come. The Lord said concerning the hours of the kingdom of heaven, concerning the latter days, 
He said, see that no one deceives you. Pay attention. Do not be deceived. You have lost the kingdom of heaven if you do that. You have lost the glory of God. You have lost the rapture of the church. The church will be raptured only if you continue in the word of God. And it is written, and do not think that I am saying this. But if we go to Isaiah the prophet, by the grace of Jesus Christ, may God help me find it. Isaiah 26, 2. If you want us, let us see it together and mark it down in your heart. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 2. This is one verse that is so serious. Open the gates, says the Holy Spirit in heaven, that the righteous nation may enter. And which is the righteous nation? The one that keeps the truth. This is the righteous nation. The one that keeps the truth. So my brother, preach the word. Testify, convince, rebuke, exhort. Rebuke, exhort, but with all long suffering and patience. Because the time will come. When people will not suffer, will not endure the sound doctrine, they won't be able to contain it. They'll consider it too strict. But also Elijah was strict and he was rough. Yeah, the word of God is strict. And, and Peter, the Lord said to Peter, if you want to go, go. The word is strict. But Peter said, whom will it, to whom shall we go, Lord? You alone have words of eternal life. So people will come, times will come when people will not be in, able to endure sound doctrine. But they will heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth. And they will teach them things that are pleasing to their desires and to their flesh. This is easy, this is what I like. They won't say this is what Christ likes and this is what is pleasing to Christ. But this is what I like. And then they and they will turn their ears away from the truth. And they will pay attention to fairy tales. But you, be watchful, be careful. Be watchful. And study these things, continue in these things so that your progress may be evident to all. Be careful, pay attention to yourself and to the doctrine. Because only if you do this will you be saved and also all those who hear you. So suffer. Do the work of an evangelist. Preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Make your ministry complete. Whatever God has given you, work it. But for the glory of God. Because the day will come when the righteous judge will give you the crown of righteousness. Only He. Only if you fight the good fight. Because the life of the Christian is a fight. And it's a fight because we have an enemy who is striving to deceive even the chosen ones and to pull them away from the Word of God. To push them out of the truth of the Gospel. Out of this Gospel here. Not the gospel that many people preach, but the gospel that is written by God and the Holy Spirit. So fight the good fight. It is a fight. It is a fight for you to stay in the faith. It is a fight for you to finish your road. A fight to remain in holiness and cleanness. It is a fight. And we have to make this decision, my brethren. We will strive and race 
Righteousness so that we may receive the crown. Yes. There is the narrow gate and the difficult path. Which is the good race. But only this one leads to heaven. Don't be afraid. Because there will be God's for knowledge. There are God's for grace. God's power and Holy Spirit. He will not leave you nor forsake you. will not be discouraged. He will strengthen you and support you. He will comfort you. And support you. Do not fear the good race. But walk in the path that God has prepared for you. And seek it. Ask from Christ to teach you the way that you have to walk in. He is ready. He is the teacher. He is the professor. He will lead you. Do not be careless, Senzai. Do not just relax and have a good time. Because the moment will come. When the trumpet of God will sound. The calling. The voice of the archangel will sound. And you will not be ready for your transformation. So today is a welcome day. Today is a day of salvation. Today let us choose the way of godliness. Today let us condemn and reject the path of ungodliness. Today. Today let us decide to strive. Besides, we don't need to... to, we, have, we don't need to fight against sin to the point of blood. We didn't have to fight until the point of blood. They haven't persecuted us to stone us to death like they did back then. So for that reason, my son, do not become discouraged under the training of the Lord. Yes, it's a difficult path. Yes, it's a narrow gate, but only that leads to heaven. So let us make the decision. The decision that we made when we were baptized, when we said, Lord, I will follow you no matter what happens, so please help me. Help me in my weakness. Help me in my mistakes. Help me in my lack of faith. Help me, Lord Jesus. He will not leave you nor forsake you until the end of the ages. Amen.